Mattel releases another Masters, and there's a real buzz in Ethereum. Here's your look at the Mattel Master Universe Origins, Buzzsaw Hordak. Hordak's Buzzsaw Blast catches his enemies off guard. Before sinking our teeth into Buzzsaw Hordak, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall does the figure stand. I'm going to take it right to the top of his crest here and stop it right there. Buzzsaw Hordak stands 6.082 inches in height, or 6 inches, we'll just say 6. Switching that over to centimeters, then the figure is almost 15 and a half, 15.4 centimeters to be exact. There are a few things that do get changed here on Buzzsaw Hordak versus the original one that we got before. For starters, it's his face. We can move this one over and bring in the original Hordak. So you can see there is a difference in the head sculpt between the two. So much so I'm actually considering using one of the head sculpts from Buzzsaw Hordak and popping it on top of the neck of the original Hordak that we got before. Other comparisons we can also make as well, just covering up quickly. Here he is next to Battle Armor Skeletor and Battle Armor He-Man. Two other deluxe figures. Well, well, let's move everything over here so we can get poor He-Man in frame. Yes, as, as I was saying, two other deluxe figures that Mattel also released under the Masters of the Universe Origins banner. The figure includes a good amount of accessories, which we'll talk about in a second. Before doing that, though, let's look at a brand new comic, which we have not gotten before, at least not that I've gotten before. And this one is called Horde Plague. One of the things that you can see introduced on the front cover here is Mosquito, a figure I am super excited for. I think I share that with Pixel Dan. Both of us really do like Mosquito, so I'm really excited to see what they're going to be doing with a version of him. I'm wondering if they're going to still incorporate the Liquid Center. Mm, liquid Center. But you can see there he is on the front, and as we flip through the pages, we get more of the exploits of Mosquito, although you don't see many of it just in the beginning. I did also order this online, and I did get U.S. packaging, so because of that, there is actually dialogue in the inside. Short of me actually stopping to read all of it, just kind of quickly show you the artwork inside, I really like this panel right here. That's a good-looking Hordak. But again, you'll flip straight through it, and we'll also pull out the instructions I don't know why I still left that in there. Really, really excited, though, for Mosquito, even though he's not advertised on the back. Advertised, though, on the back is the other two battle armor figures that we've already compared, and also Castle Grayskull and the Wing Raider. I'm planning a review of Castle Grayskull will be coming up shortly. Still have yet to pick up the Wind Raider. Okay. Then, of course, he also comes included with the instruction sheets. Sometimes I feel the need just to kind of leave these off in these reviews, but it's just to show you as well that the figures do include them. It's just to show you the things that you can pop off the figure, even though he has a built-in gimmick. You can still swap the arms, the lower torso, and the head off with other Masters of the Universe Origins figures. If, of course, you want to have him, I don't know, if you want to mix him up with one of the other figures that we've gotten before. Okay, so let's move on to the things that come included with figures, some of which, actually one of which, one of the things, were things that we already got before, and that's his crossbow. Grabbing off to the side here, here's the crossbow that came with the original Hordak. They are identical to one another. It's not to say that they would have to have changed anything. I feel like, you know, keeping the same head sculpts and the same molding of crossbow is fine. It also works the exact same way as well. You basically are going to condense these until it latches onto the back area here. And then from there, you basically just press the button that's on the top, and that just releases it. So it's just a simple crossbow. Still appreciate the fact that they included it with the figure. The thing that doesn't come included with this figure, though, is his little bat friend. This is the one that came included with the original Hordak. I don't really feel like I'm leaving, losing something out by not having this included with the figure. I mean, it was a nice touch to include it with the first Hordak, but like I said, I don't feel like it necessarily needed it with this release of Hordak. So he doesn't come include with that. Uh, interesting thing enough, though, he does come include with a swappable hand, a gripping hand, because currently in the socket of his forearm right now, while this hand is gripping, this hand right here is more the relaxed hand. A little crooked on the fingers there, Hordak, but he still has the more relaxed hand. So if you wanted to pop that off, all you have to really do is just wiggle this off and remove it just like that. 
and then we'll go ahead and just replace with the existing hand or the sorry the replacement hand pop that in place so he does have the the means to hold two weapons instead of just the one let's talk a little bit actually you know what yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, let's talk the, about the head sculpt. Then I was going to change my mind. Then we we're going to talk about the buzzsaw blades. But the buzzsaw blades have more to do with the gimmick that's housing inside of his body as we speak. So I think for the time being, we'll talk about the head sculpt on this guy first. He comes with two swappable heads. And I wanted to first bring the Hordak back in. This was the original Hordak that we got before. What is it about the deluxe figures that end up giving us better head sculpts than the ones that originally came with the single released figures? I mean, I really like the idea that this Hordak, first of all, as you can see, has lighter gray on the sides of his face, but he also has the bigger eyes, which I feel like the original Hordak was lacking in that department. I'm probably going to find myself removing this head sculpt, or actually, no, I won't. I'm going to keep this one in place for the time being. But what I will be doing, though, is that this Hordak also comes included with a smiling head sculpt, which is this one right here. Not much does change, granted, to the face, other than the fact he's got a big smile on his face. And I will be most definitely taking this head sculpt. In fact, I'm going to do it right now just to prove, just to show you guys that I'm committed to this. I'm going to go ahead and remove the head sculpt. Again, all you have to do is just remove it off the ball peg. And then we're going to go ahead and take the smiling head sculpt and just plug that into place. There we go. Oh, didn't do it all the way. There we go. All the way. And that's what we get when we swap the head sculpts off to show you where we started from, though. I mean, seriously? Isn't this much better of a head sculpt? This is the head that we should have really gotten with this figure right from day one. Nothing against necessarily the older head sculpt, but when you compare it with a smiling version of Hordak, how do you beat that? Let's get that head all the way in. So this is going to be the way I'm going to now display the original Hordak, and then we'll keep the more anger looking Hordak for Buzzsaw version. Okay, so let's move that out of the way now that we've made those necessary changes. The figure does have a working gimmick, like with the original toy. He does have releasing buzzsaw blades. The neat thing about it, though, is the buzzsaw blades are different from one another. Let's just put the figure down here for a second. They aren't the same buzzsaw blade. So interesting, in fact, that he wants people to know this is his property, that he actually put the Horde logo on the bottom of each of the blades. That's, that's rather interesting. But like you see, as you can see from the front, not does much change between the blow saws. It's more so the side shapes and the teeth, the number of teeth. What you do with the figure is you bring the head up here and this whole front section. First of all, I want to show you the side of the figure. It probably would make some sense then to bring the original Hordak in. So you can see there's some additional lift on the back of his cape. He has this extra piece that serves as a release button, but that does cause the figure holding on to him, does cause the cape to actually jet out just a little bit more than the original Hordak figure. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring the figure's head up just out of the way. And on the bottom, there's a little hinge. Now this whole front flap does drop forward. Just release it like this. And inside you'll see there's a cavity. It doesn't really matter which blade you go with. I'm just going to go with this one for the time being. And the key though, is when you are putting it in, you have to make sure you push in all the way. In fact, you'll hear a snap as you finally get that lodged inside. Now, thing, the crucial thing about all this is don't close the latch. The button on the back isn't strong enough to release the buzz saw and also to push forward the little front trap door. So you'll want to make sure that you leave that out when you are ready to activate it. And then to activate it, all you have to do is just take this and push it down. And you sort of can hold it like an aerosol spray can, although it's not going to be spraying out paint. It's going to be shooting out a buzzsaw blade. Pressing the button. Pre pressing the button. There we go. You do have to apply a little bit of... I guess I probably should hold it with my thumb. There you go. And across the room it went. I'm never going to find that ever again. Luckily, at least... For those who were able to freeze down the frames and see that in slow motion, luckily at least I get a second one of these and that locks into place. You'll excuse me if I don't take the time to do that a second time because I know then I'm never going to find that. Oh, I don't even know where it is. Don't even know. It's somewhere across the room. You probably even heard it shooting across. Let's go ahead and close things up. The neat thing also about it too is that short of the fact that yes, the cape does stick out quite a bit. Not really much of the rest of the figure does change. It doesn't, he doesn't look big and bulky. 
Again, when we bring in now smiling, oh, I just love that head sculpt, the smiling head sculpt. When you see the bodies, there's not too much that does change. You could maybe say that there's a the little more detailing done to the front of the torso, and also the Horde logo is a lot smaller and a little bit more defined, whereas the original one is more just sort of a suggestion of a symbol. So yeah, the bodies are a little bit more. I mean, I would really love to just be able to switch out the bodies, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, again, a little bit different that does change there. The lower half of the bodies, as well as the arms, as well as the arm bands, nothing does change between the figures. Although I couldn't help but notice as well, looking at Hordak, not only was his, his legs, his lower legs loose, so much so I can just spin them around, but unfortunately, the paint got a little on the messy side. He's got a little bit of possibly spaghetti sauce on top of the, the top of his boots. And I think I may be able to try to, I can't, f could I flake it off? Maybe I could flake it off. I was going to say I may have to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and see if I can just remove that without actually damaging. I think this is just the molding of the plastic. So really any bit of paint removal would be likely more the red. Unfortunately, it does stand out. It almost looks like She-Ra just threw a wad of chewing gum and whipped it against Hordak and it stuck onto his boot. I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely going to see if I can maybe change that. For the figure's articulation, let's go ahead and look at that right now. His head rotates all the way around. Despite having the gate, the cape gimmick on the back, it doesn't certainly limit or hinder what you can do with that figure's head. Rotates all the way around. You can hinge it up, down, and back and forth as well. As for his arms, they hinge out at a very comfortable 90-degree angle. You can also take the arms and rotate them all the way around. The arm band I've noticed on this figure seems... I almost feel like I want to push it up a little bit more. It sits really loose on the figure's bicep. Speaking of the bicep, or just below the bicep, he does have a hinge in the elbow, which also allows the forearm to rotate all the way around. And whatever hand you decide to display him with rotates also all the way around and also hinges back and forth. Because so much of it is centered around this being his gimmick, doesn't, again, limit any of the articulation on the lower half of him either. Split the legs out. You can go forward and back on the legs. Bend at the knee. Rotate on the lower leg. Rotate the extremely loose boot. Too loose for my liking. You can also hinge the feet back and forth, and you can also ankle pivot those. Get a good gander at those Hordak webbed feet. Again, a really nice looking figure. Shame, unfortunately, now I'm going to have to go tracking down that uh, buzzsaw blade. But I'm leaving up a little bit of space again, so we can bring in now a smiling Hordak. I mean, the idea of getting another Hordak is already something that I would be interested in. But then the idea as well that they gave us a brand new head sculpt like this. Sort of the same way that with Battle Armor Skeletor. Because we got those two head sculpts with Battle Armor Skeletor, I ultimately then just swapped out that head sculpt and used it with the original Origin Skeletor, which I always really thought was an inferior head sculpt in the first place. Not that Hordak had an inferior head sculpt, but comparing it now with the with the two that we get with Buzzsaw Hordak, I'm definitely going to be making use of both of these head sculpts on two different Hordak figures. I must have spent a good 10 minutes trying to track down where that other Buzzsaw blade is and finally just threw my hands up in the air and said, forget about it. I'm never going to find it. Or what's going to happen is I'm going to find it on a day I'm looking for something else. Is that usually how it is? Buzzsaw Hordak. I really want to say Buzzsaw Blade Hordak, but Buzzsaw Hordak has, again, a very nice, interesting gimmick that does work. Works almost too well. You're never going to find those Buzzsaw Blades. Shoot it in a small room where you know it's not going to go anywhere. It does at least have a workable gimmick, and a gimmick that doesn't intrude the figure either. It doesn't make the figure look bulky or out of place, or you're looking at it and you're like, I don't know, something's off on his torso. The only thing that's really off on the figure is that little back piece that attaches to his cape. It's really one of those unavoidable cases, but at least the rest of the figure looks like just a regular Hordak figure with two very good looking head sculpts. So thrilled that they did decide to include the smiling Hordak face as well as the regular Hordak face, and even like the regular Hordak face isn't the same head as the other one that we got before. We sort of get treated, spoiled, if you will, with these deluxe figures that we ultimately get some bonus heads that end up being better than the original heads that we've got before. So smiling Hordak isn't going to be on this body, but it's definitely going to be on my original Hordak the way that it should have been right from day one. What do you guys think of Buzzsaw Hordak? 
love this figure. Let me know down below in the comments section whether you've managed to pick it up for yourself or just really just based on this review. If you've been watching this review and sort of been weighing in, maybe you're taking down some jotted notes in your notepad, let me know. We'll talk, digest, engage, befriend one another. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of Buzzsaw Hordak. And if you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and that making sure, yes, you're coming back to this channel because we will eventually be looking at Castle Grayskull. I have picked it up. It's just a matter of space. Just kind of looking around. Do I have the space to be able to review it? I really hope the answer is yes. But definitely more reviews will be coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.